Hello for my fellow bliss and welcome back to Clan Ad, an iconic visual novel, which I'm finding quite funny at the moment. That girl from yesterday. Let's not wonder about ourselves, let's wonder about other people. That cluttered pile of cardboard boxes. What a cruel cool sight to see. Don't be late tomorrow. Yeah, I'll try not to be. I wonder how things went this morning. These vague thoughts come to my mind as I stare out the window, chin in hand. And... Just a second, period, ends. What up, I'm here. Shinhara appears. What are you here for? Didn't I tell you last night? I'm going to challenge to you. Oh, for goodness sakes, don't do that, my man. You're going to be seen as a coward and also you're going to be beaten up. I'm about to head out to do it. You were serious about that? Listen, these kinds of things need to be nipped in the bud. What kind of things need to be nipped in the bud, my man? I've got a teacher she can't get away with acting like this at, at this school. Okay, so what school can you get away? Come on, let's go. Nah, I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna go with you, okay? You just watch. Sinhar leaves the classroom with a smirk on his face. Yeah, that's the last thing, that's the last time you're gonna have a smirk in your face. I watch him as he walks off. What? Aren't you coming? He comes back. I don't want to be associated with the likes of you. Listen, I don't want to have to put my hands on a girl either. Then why are you doing it then? But we can't just stand by and watch while she keeps up with this act, can we? I don't see anything wrong with standing by and watching. She thinks it's going as full of good as those so that she can get away with anything. Are you okay with that? Yeah. That's why I've decided to play the bad guy this time. I'll put her in her place. <laughs> right in her place. Bam, zoom straight to the moon. Sinhar takes off, leaving behind some very dated parting words. Right when break ends, Sinhar returns. Yeah, I thought so. That's what happens when you pick on someone else that you don't know. He sits straight down and begins preparing for class. That's awfully unlike you. Come on, tell me what happened. Huh? What are you talking about? He takes his eyes off the freshly opened textbook and looks my way. What am I talking about? He went to pick a fight with that Toyoma Tomoya girl, right? Uh oh, that. Yeah, it was no big deal after all. Did you win? Did I win? Huh, of course. Okay, that's been sexist, man. I'm a man. How could I have possibly lost? Well, you're not being all triumphant and confident about it, so not to mention, I'm tougher than the average average guy, too. No, you're scrawny. <laughs> really? <laughs> what, are you down to me? Yes. You joker. Oh, there's a teacher. He must have lost. Uh, with no plans to go to college after graduating, nothing feels more meaningless to me right now than sitting through class. I'm bored. My mind continues tuning out the teacher's words. The subject may change here and there, but it's all the same to me, really. I'm not gonna skip class, I'm not a goddamn city student. Right, it's not like there's anything else fun to do. I guess I just waste my time here. And... And it all ends. Morning classes finally come to an end. How do these guys manage to sit through four hours of classes every morning? I was only able to stomach it because it was the first time in a while that I made the schooling time for first period. Hey, shop don't I? Let's go eat lunch. Oh, did you come back to life after getting some sleep? Come back to life? What are you talking about? I told you, I wasn't even scratch back there. <laughs> you liar. Ah, it's crazy busy in here today. Hmm. I notice a girl standing quietly by the entrance of the cafeteria. That is, she's completely still waiting for chaos to subside. If we just stand there, all that'll be left is and pan. Hey, Sunohara. Huh? You gotta get bread? No, just take your time here and eat. Huh? I buy a 180 yen ticket from... Oh, sorry, for playing Odin from the machine and shove it towards Sunohara. 
Oh, you're a treat? Sweet. Something came up I have to take care of. Go make friends with a rugby team or something. No way am I eating with a rugby team. And what exactly do you have to do anyway? It's a stomach ache or a headache. Can't f you figure out that much out of your own? <laughs> uh, that's terrible. Take care of yourself. See ya. Yeah, it's obviously a lie, but we don't want Sunaharas and all that. I should bill him for that later. I'll make sure he's lost in the crowd and out of sight before going over to you said yell. Despite standing right in front of her, she doesn't notice me. It's as though she could never imagine meeting an acquaintance in a place like this. Hey! Huh? Ah. Furukawa! She takes several steps back in surprise. Oh, sub Todai san So you were here too? Yeah. For bread? Yeah. I see, I think bread is a wonderful choice. What about you? What about me? It somehow feels like she's forcing herself to act cheerful. Like she wants to show off her good side even to someone like me. I, well, was thinking of buying something other than Anne Pan today, but she looks at the crowd of students. I don't think I'll be able to after all. Did you even try to get one? Yes, I did. I was the first one to leave the classroom. But our class finished late and... It was already like this when I got here. Yeah, I wouldn't expect a girl to be able to get something popular unless her class let out early. It's too bad. She did try, so I guess I don't have a choice. I'll go in there and get something for you. Which is why I tell her that. What? But... No, you shouldn't. I'm good at this kind of thing. Just leave it to me. What kind of bread do you want? No, I couldn't ask you to... Does a cutlet sandwich sound good? A cutlet sandwich? I've heard legends that those are the most popular item on the menu. Legends? They're just sandwiches. <laughs> so, cutlet sandwich? Something that nice would be wasted on me. Are you sure you don't mind? Stop thinking low of yourself, madam. Does it matter what I think? You just worry about getting one. You want one, right? Yes, I would love to try one. Okay, I'll be back in a bit. Alright, good luck. I charge toward the crowded bread counter. I force my fruity other students to the front of a display case. But I'm far too late. Of course there wouldn't be any cut as ever just left at this point. So to make do with. I escape the crowded scene gasping for breath. Are you alright? Sorry. I could only get takoyaki bread. No, oh, that's completely fine. It looks delicious. Really? Well, if you say so. Yes, it's my first time having one. I'm really looking forward to it. Well, here you go. 150 yen. Okay, hang on one second, please. 150 yen exactly? She takes out a cute wallet and places some coins in my hand. So in words, you have to match the tone of for word. So, you have to match the word with the tone of a word. Cute! Thank you very much. Or maybe it's even like a eerie cube. I don't know. Cute! Cute! That's when I notice. I've got to buy something for myself. The strength drains my body and I hang my head. What am I doing? How could I be so selfish to myself that I forgot to even buy something for myself? It's like a matter. She asked me as I continue to stand still after taking her money. I haven't bought anything for myself yet. Huh? In that case, sub to die, you should eat this, please. No, it's fine. I'll just wait for the crowd to die down. But only Anne Pound will be left if you do that. I'll go buy something for you. What? What would you like? Um, some kind of bread with toppings on it? So a croquette sandwich or a yakisoba pan? Yeah. Okay, I'll be back soon. Goodness sakes, I buy something for her, and then she buys something for me. Okay. Furukawa goes to stand at the end of a line, leaving me behind. She doesn't seem to have any intention whatsoever of forcing her way through the scores of people. Which means it'll take even longer, but it's more appropriate. I'm sorry, I end up with Anne Pan. A weary smile finds its way onto my face. That's fine, I'm okay with Anne Pan. Why don't we trade? It's fine, I used to eat th those things like crazy. You don't eat Ampan very often? Barely ever, sorry. I can't remember the last time I had one. 
In that case, try having a bite. They taste very good. This is cafeteria food, remember. But then, of course, I don't like sweets. Oh, dear. After that, we moved to the courtyard to eat our food. You know, I'm the same way as you. Always late for school. I'm a didaquint. What? I'm, a, I'm notorious around here for goofing off too much at night and being chronically late for class as a result. I just so happen to not be late today, but I'm pretty sleepy now because of it. Unless I yawn. Really? Yeah, just last night I didn't get home until four in the morning. Do you smoke too? What do you mean smoke too? No, I'm one of those non-smoker hoodlums. That's good. I can't stand the smell of cigarettes. Amen. I can't stand the smell of cigarettes too. My father smokes all the time. I can't go into his room because of how much it smells like smoke. Oh. The smell really sticks to my clothes too, so I have to wash them constantly. It's just awful. <laughs> it feels like it's the first time I've ever seen her smile. I wonder if she's usually smiling like this at home. That is a good question. Because at times it feels like they smile on the outside but are still very sad on the inside. Not usually, but it happens. At least her family cares for her. Are you sure? I feel relieved knowing that. Hey, what are you doing after this? Hmm? What do you mean? Well, you know, after the way the whole drama club thing turned out. You mean realising the room was a closet? Yeah. Unfortunately, the club was shut down. I remembered hearing rumours about it after the fact. There was no point in hiding it from her. I let her know just how it was. Shut down? So does that mean that the school no longer has a drama club at all? That's right. It doesn't. It was the last hope she was hanging on to at this point. And now... Well, what can you do? There's no one to blame for that. Yeah, there isn't. You were just unlucky. You're right. She seems to have accepted the news much better than I'd expected. Cutlet sandwich. Sorry I couldn't get one. Oh no, I was just... I didn't mean to sound needy. I just thought that it would be nice to be able to eat one someday. Now I remember. This is what she does to keep pushing herself forward. Which means that what I just told her must be weighing heavily on her mind. That's no real surprise though. She doesn't have any friends. Oh, come on, we can count ourselves as our friend now. And the drama club she wants to join so badly is no longer around. Oh, someone's looking this way. She peers up one of the school building windows. You're right. I wonder if we're, bo if we're bothering them. I don't think so. Now, we've been here this whole time, haven't we? Yes, you're right. Try waving at them. What? Wave your hand at them. And smile while you do it. Why you do it? That might give them something to talk. <laughs> that might give them something to talk to you about. Sorry, me by myself? Yeah, I mean, what do you think would happen if I was to wave? That's a girl up there, you know. Hmm. What's your point? Well, it looked like I was hitting on them. If I was the one to wave, come on, you can do it yourself. You know, it goes both ways. Anyways, I raise a hand for her. Um, you said to smile, right? Yes. Yeah, a big smile. Not forced smile. Um, he... Is that kind of creepy? She flips her hand back and forth through the air with a grin on her, on her face. <clears throat> the figure at the window disappears without warning. Uh, her expression freezes. Cut that sandwich. Oh my goodness sake, sorry about that. Oh no. I don't mean to sound needy by saying that. Again, I just... She repeats the same excuse over again. Much, much. It's surprisingly good. <laughs> and when we spend the day here, the two of us keep our heads affixed to the sky. I wonder if someone will ever come down from the heavens to help her. If I could... Fuku Fukukawa begins to speak. I'd like to recreate the drama club. Hearing those words makes me happy. I'm not sure if she was ever ca is what even capable of saying something that positive when we first met. But you should do it. I don't think it's that easy. Really? Yeah, as long as you're dedicated enough. 
I think it would be a lot of work. So if it's possible, I'd like to ask you to be club president. So don't ask me. A pork cutlet bowl. Excuse me. Oh, I was just thinking of how much I like the pork cutlet bowls at the cafeteria. That's all. Anyway, you're the one who ought to be club president. I'm not even interested in plays. I see. Well, that's too bad. You better not tell me you're giving up because of that. But doing it by myself would be pretty lonely. Well, the solution to that problem is easy. Just get more club members. She looks worried. Or to be more accurate, she seems to be regretting doing something that she can't take back. I feel a little so a bit sorry for her. Of course I will help. What kind of gentleman would I be if I do not help her on my first time playing the game? I know there'll be other multiple safe choices. Multiple choices, I mean. Help, of course. But you know, I decided to speak up. I won't join the club, but I can at least help you find people who will. Her eyes open wide as she lo and she looks at me. Really? Yeah, I promise. I'll do everything I can to help you out until you become a wonderful club president. In that case, I'll try my best. Alright. What am I happy about? I just promised to spend a bunch of my time helping out the drama club at the, t at the time of the year when everyone's busy cramming for entrance exams. No, I'm more like her than them, anyway. Ever the bystander detached and watching from afar. Did you just say something? No. Wouldn't it be great if something like half of the school joined a drama club? I think that would be overwhelming. Yeah, too many. Oh well, it's always a good idea to set your sights high. So let's pretend that's our goal. I do you think that's too many people, but okay. You could do it, full colour, San. It's my first time calling her by that name. Okay. Okie dokie. And off they go again. Once afternoon class and home room end, everyone but the students on clean duty leave for the day. Hey, sub toad eye. Sunha was sitting on his desk facing me. What now? Have you been off doing something fun? No. Huh? You were acting weird during that time and you ran off after school yesterday, right? You gotta let me in on whatever you're up to. I wish I knew about something that fun. So it's nothing? It's nothing. Remember what I told you? A stomach ache or a headache? Which one is it? Both. Seriously? Yeah, I've been feeling awful. Oh, that's all? Hey, thanks for invalidating how bad I feel. Talk about boring. Well, wanna go wanna to go somewhere today then? Were you not listening to a word I just said? Huh? I'm saying that I feel like doo-doo! I'm out of here, see ya. I grab my empty bag and make for the door. Well, if you take off with that much energy, then I'm not gonna lie. You don't really have that bad of a stomach ache or a headache. I'm standing in front of the drama club room. Ugh, I'm back here again. Do I really feel that much of a sense of responsibility? I'm even ignoring my schoolwork. So why am I going to these lengths? I hear the pit patter of footsteps and turn around. Fukawa is heading my direction a half run. Sub to I I hear during her voice she says my name. She trots up and stands beside me. I'm surprised. I figured I'd see someone up here, but I didn't expect it to be you. She's sorry to disappoint. Oh no, it's not like I was hoping it'd be someone else. I'm glad it was you, sub I san I just didn't expect anyone I knew to be waiting for me. It made me so happy, which is why I ran over. I see. Well, I may be cold and insensitive to her. I'm the one, per I'm one person she can talk to. Um, so what should we do now? Well... I opened the door, and it's the same as before. The floor was carpeted with strong cardboard boxes and equipment. I guess we can start... But bleh. I guess we can start by cleaning. Yeah, that sounds good. Make it more neatly arranged. We need to start by getting the stuff out of the way. Yep. We carry the stuff into a different empty classroom, then get cleaning supplies from yet another empty classroom before finally getting to work. We dust the place, swept it with a broom, then wipe it down with cloths. Also, it has clothes, but it doesn't have an E in it. As the setting sun starts to beam into the room, 
it's finally in good enough shape to use for club activities. I guess this is good enough. Yes. Fuwakara's eyes gleam as they survey the area. Our room. It's done. Our room? I'm not a club member, you know. What? Her expression suddenly changes. Tears forming along the bottom of her now glossy eyes. But this is one thing I have to make crystal clear. The most I'm going to do is help you find club members. But plays are fun. I don't have any interest in them. Do you really not have any? Yeah, sorry, I don't. A look of depression washed over her face. I never even done anything that would have suggested a shred of interest to begin with. Listen, Fulkara. Yes? I'll find people in no time. Excuse me, we could do this together, you know. No, that's not the problem. I just wish that you could have stayed here, subtitled Isan. No matter how many people the club had in it, um, well, I'm happy that you feel that way, but, well, I'll think about it. How's that? I'll leave the issue vague. Okay, please do. Yeah, my role here ends with gathering new club members. Once I do that, she'll have lots of people at school to talk to. And then, she definitely won't need to cling to me any longer. What's wrong with having a friend? That's as far as I'm, I'll meddle in her life. You're not meddling in any way, shape or form. I think she honestly appreciates your company. The two of us walk down the hill, barely have a students in sight. A small part of me doesn't want to go home. No, a big part actually. And I'm pretty hungry. Yes, I am too. I'd sure like to get something to eat. Same here. Do you want to go eat somewhere? I'll try inviting her. You want to eat out somewhere? Yeah. Sounds wild and dangerous, right? Well, I need to go home and help make dinner. Hey, don't do that. I can't ask my mother to do it all on her own. She says the words and smiles. She must not mind doing it at all. Her actions are enough to show me that her home is probably a warm, loving one. Do you not eat dinner at home, subtitled I, Sam? There's nothing to eat, even if I did want... Even, even if I did go home. The science lingers for a moment, heavy with implications. Um, well... She tries to say something to salvage conversation, but I'll tell her before she does. My old man's doing fine. My mother isn't around, though. That first part's a lie, but your old man's not doing fine. So, do you not eat dinner with your father? Yeah, kind of really hard to, kind of hard to really, since we're fighting all the time. I describe the situation in that way to make it easier to understand. I doubt anyone will truly get how terrible the situation is at this point. I'm the only one who does. Did something happen? Yeah, a lot. So much it can't be undone. She falls silent, seemingly worried that she's taken the conversation in an awkward direction. It is a big deal, for goodness sakes. That's just how single father households are. In fact, it would be kind of weird if two guys lived that close and were... No, it would not, actually. It would not be weird if two guys live together and be close. People can have those kinds of relationships, you know. I tack some comments on in an attempt to smooth things over. Then again, this game was made in times before, like, LGBTQIA communities really starts to um, have a positive impact upon the internet. So, it wouldn't be surprising in a way that um, this was made back in the days when um, same gender marriages, same gender partnerships were an alien thing but there's nothing wrong with that at all is that so but if there's somewhere she puts her hands together in front of her chest even if you do fight i think it would be good if there's at least some way you can communicate she comes to a conclusion yeah take a breath filling my lungs and collecting my thoughts it's strange why did i tell her so much about my family stuff because you trust her. Um, if there's not too much trouble, I'd be happy to invite you over for dinner. Maybe it was because I was waiting to hear those words. I just want to get as far away from my house as possible. 
Are you sure that's all right? I don't mind. My parents would be happy to have you if they if they knew you were my friend. I'm certain of it. I see. They really must be a happy family. While I hesitate for a moment at the thought of barging into someone else's place, I'm even more reluctant to go back to my own home. So rather than being modest, I decide to take part in their meal. If you go straight from here, you'll find a park. There's a bakery that faces it. Okay. That bakery is my house. Got it. So please head there and wait for me. I'll be leaving soon as well. Okay. See you there. Yes. Question mark. She says after I grab the back of her collar. Hold on. Why are we split up here first? What? Does something matter? Well, yeah, kind of. I mean, if you're not around to introduce me to your parents, I can't just trapeze into your place. I think I'm just some sketchy dude calling himself your friend. It's fine. You're wearing our school uniform. You're missing the point. Hell, it'd be even weirder if your parents let a stranger ride into their house and we all started watching TV together like one big happy family. Like, I'm, like I said, I'm confident this will all be okay, trust me. My parents don't worry about things like that. It won't be weird. They'll treat you kindly, I promise. That's pretty nuts. What kind of family are they? I can't even imagine. I look up to the sky. Oh no. When I look back down, she's already far away facing me and waving. You'll have no trouble finding it if you just go to the park. She calls out the words from the distance of her knees. God damn it, I'm left all alone. She really is ignorant about how society works, isn't she? I'm now keenly aware of this fact. I guess I'll buy a box lunch again and head to Sunahara's room. Why'd you say that? I turn around head back as I mutter under my breath. But then my legs stop. What would she do if I disappeared right now? She'd probably go look for me. I've got myself into a rather sticky situation here, haven't I? <sighs> I feel irritated all of a sudden. Irritated at myself for getting into this mess in the first place. Nothing would have happened if I had done anything! Damn it! I shut my head to snap out of it. Yeah. I'll just have to do what she told me. I need to be as natural as possible. If I am, then everything will go off of our heart hitch! And if that's the case, I won't have to regret today. All that'll happen is I'll eat dinner at her house, then head home. Nothing more, nothing less. Are you sure? That's what I'll do. I pivot on my heel and start walking once more. Further think about how to turn this unnatural predicament into a natural one. So this is the place, huh? I see a bakery with media across the street from the park. The billboard says, Furukawa Bread! I think it might be that one. What a plain looking- Come on! Sometimes a plain one is very easy for people to get absorbed by. Doing lots of fancy stuff just flingering around and just be all captivating and complicated to understand. Its glass door is half closed but a brilliant light pours out from it like a knocked over soda without a cap. They seem to be still be open. Okay, even so it feels hard to walk in. Do any customers other than regulars come here? If I was a someone looking to buy bread, I'd probably look elsewhere, even if it meant going further down the road. Oh, come on! But today I'm here because Furukawa invites me. My only option is to go in! And I step through the door and enter inside. No one's here. Hey, yo! I try saying something, but don't get anything in reply. So they've just left it unattended? In that case, someone can help. No! Do not shoplift, you idiot! Look at the different kind of breads lined up on the shelves. There's a lot left. What are we going to do with it, all this? But it's already quite late. The trays are covered in bread. They look like they taste good. You know, I think I... Oh my goodness sakes! Do not... There's something in this. Good evening. Suddenly I hear a voice coming from behind me. And I turn around and shockingly to find a woman standing right there in front of me. Judging by the apron she's wearing, she probably works here. Could she be Furukawa's mom? She seems pretty young to be, if that's the case. That's a compliment to a mother, I'm not gonna lie. That's this week's new product. Try it out, please. Okay. How much is it? You don't need to pay anything. It'll just go to waste otherwise. Lucky for me. The concept behind this 
that peace is calm. Huh? So I'll feel calm if I eat this? Yes, I think you'll feel quite calm. I don't really understand, but I'll try eating it anyway. Greg, crumble. It's full of rice crackers. Isn't it amazing? I think it's a winning idea. It defe it's defeated me at the very least. It's called rice cracker bread. Exactly as advertised, I see. I think that everyone from children to the elderly would love eating these. I expected a broad outpouring of disgust for them, to be frank. I think my lull is making her anxious. Uh, do you not like it? She asked me with fear in her voice. Yeah. I'm gonna give this to you straight. Oh my god, that's... Okay, you could phrase it differently. What? What could be the problem? Is it the name? I'm not very confident about the name, you know. Uh, what should I change it to? It's all crumbly, so maybe just crumbly bread? Or would crackly bread be better? Um, may I? Please go ahead. I think the problem is more fundamental than that. Oh? Where you went wrong was having the idea of putting rice crackers in bread in the first place. But isn't it tasty? I'm saying this because it isn't. Tears begin to well up in her eyes then. Dash. She turns around and runs away. Hey, what's wrong with you? Are you a... The store is empty once again. I just stand there dumbfounded and alone. Guess the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. Goodness sakes, man. You could phrase things a little better. And, you know, offer some advice rather than saying, Nah, it won't work. The problem is more fundamental than that. If you've got a problem with something, break down the problem and offer solutions up. Don't just say about... Don't just say that there's something bad about it. Just say that, alternatively, rather than using rice cracker, you could use rye or wheat to make bread. Like, I'm not too sure now. But, okay, I can't help but think of a saying. What kind of family environment is this exactly anyway? And you just give yourself a good first impression to your daughter, to your friend's mother. I gradually start to feel more and more uneasy. I hope that her dad is normal at least. Hey you, what are you going to do about this? I hear a menacing voice call out from behind me. I turn to face it this time I see a man with a threatening expression staring at me. Don't tell me, is this her dad? He's young, just like her mom. He seems like a teenager did a quit at that age, but never managed to grow up. What do you need? <laughs> What you need to do is just eat it and tell her it's delicious. It's called being decent. It's called having manners. That's not something I do for someone I'm meeting for the first time. The truth is always harsh, you see. How cold-hearted could, could you be just to come right out and give her the truth? Just imagine if your parents suddenly told you one day that they actually picked you up as a baby from under the bridge. You'd feel a little blue, wouldn't you? That's why you should tell her that bread tastes good. Well, what do you have to say? I'm not going to let you act like this if like this isn't your problem just because you're a customer. Everyone around here eats her bread and tells her it's delightful. Like if clouds and rainbows had flavours, they taste like her bread. It's an unspoken rule, a code, a law. I don't think so. This is absurd. Don't break it. Because if you do, I'm a stomp a mud hole in you, then walk it dry. What kind of ridiculous home have I walked into? Uh, that's a lot of leftover bread again. Man grumbles as he walks around the store. He starts, starts grabbing bread off trays and stuff from them into plastic bags in front of me. What the? We've only sold one of Sine's cracker breads, and it's in my hands. These guys are. Going to Isagari San's home then. So he goes around showing the leftovers with neighbors. Yuck. No one likes that guy. Ah! This one hasn't sold at all either. Now would be a good idea to run. I quietly do an about face and attempt to exit the store. Hey you, I recognize that uniform. Don't you go to the same school as my kid? He noticed. Hey, I said hold on. That's right, I do. So what? Are you Nagas's friend? Yeah, you got a problem with that? Ugh, you should have said that earlier. 
Hey, Sine, we're going all out tonight. He approaches me and grabs both my shoulders. I'm going home. He then starts dragging me with an uncanny amount of force. Well, there's nowhere I could resist. The table is absolutely covered with rows of leftover bread. I'm sorry. I didn't know you were Nagasa's, Nagaisa's friend. <laughs> I feel embarrassed now. If I'd known, I wouldn't have acted like that in front of you. I guess it's a frequent sight to her customers. <laughs> Don't worry about it, Sine. He's a little bit of a weirdo. You shouldn't say things like that to a customer. To our daughter's friend, you can say that again. In any case, this is something to celebrate. I can't believe Nagaisa was able to bring a friend to the house this fast. Not only that, but a boy, Akio-san. What? A man? <laughs> what, did you, did you just notice now? Maybe it's even her... Whoa, whoa there. <sighs> like I'd hand Nagaisa to a wuss like you. Get lost, Scram. Okay, I'll leave. Hey, and you call yourself a man? A real man would take her for me, even if it's by way of a, a vicious duel where we both brandish broken bottles and switch braids. <laughs> but if you tried, even if you tried, I still wouldn't hand her over. Um, which is it? Because you basically just contradict yourself there. <laughs> now, no, just sit up, okay? Fulcar's mom grins as she recommends different kinds of bread to me. This one is popular. I think it's really delicious. Fulcar's dad practically burns holes right through me with his menacing stare. His eyes filled with rage and malice all the while. An unspoken rule. A code. A law. Oh, come on. I'm home. Ah. The princess has returned. It seems like Fulcar is finally back. I'm saved. I think. Your dad is being a bit of a menace. See? You're already getting along. That's right, my daughter. Just leave it to me. We wouldn't let your friends sit around and get bored. All three thrust their fists toward one another. I just stare at the scene like an idiot. Why are you looking all stupid like that? Oh, I just thought it'd be best if I didn't get involved in anything having to do with his family. That's all. No big deal. Haha, <laughs> look at that. We're already such good friends that he's cracking snide jokes. That's wonderful. Phil Carl seems to be happy from the bottom of the heart. I wonder... What's with this family? Yeah, families can be nice towards one another, protagonist. Are we having bread for dinner tonight? No, tonight's a celebration. We'll just have him take the bread home. Well, I brought ingredients for dinner, so I'll help cook. You two wait and be nice to each other. Fulcar's mum follows after her. Now I'm all alone with her dad. You'll be eating something decent for dinner, don't worry. Looks like I missed my chance to get away. Come on, man. They were selling good meat at the store, so we made pork cutlet. It might not look very well made, but it tastes good. Put a bunch of shredded cabbage on your plate like this, then put the sauce on everything. So this is what Furukawa normally looks like. She's speaking a lot too. It's funny how different she is when she's around her family, even this family. I think it's because of how the protagonist perceives life and that households aren't meant to be together but just divided, which is not what family is meant to be. Family is togetherness and all that, trusting. I must not be drawing out even half the cheerfulness she normally has inside of her. I feel irritated. Irritated myself for losing to this family. Then again, we've only just met. I guess our relationship is just getting started. Wait, why am I starting to feel this competitive? This is tasty. Really? I'm so glad to hear that. Isn't that right, kiddo? You know, I've never learnt your name. He's subdued, I said. Flair subdued, I said. What a lame. Well, guess what, Akio? Your name is below five characters. Ha! <laughs> lame. Not really. You should change the Subtodai Galaxy. Now that's a name with scale. Eh. What a wonderful name, Mike. No! Don't call me Galaxy, San! Of course not. My name's Flair. 
Oh, I know, man. May your family name... So make your family name Universe. Universe get... No. <laughs> My name's Sonto and I. You sure do like to nitpick, Sene. Do you have any ideas? Hmm, what about Cosmic Flare? <laughs> That's great. May I call you Cosmic Sam then? I just told you it's Sonto and I. Hey, Cosmic, what's life like at Nagasa's school? It's subtotai. <laughs> Full car's been laughing the entire time. I guess she realizes this is one long joke. She seems so honestly happy. Hey, Cosmo. How many name changes are we up to at this point? At least four. I watch closely as the family interacts with each other. This is what one misses. It's gone pretty late. Is that all right? Subtotai, Sam? Sorry, it just seems strange to me. Huh? What did? That there were families like this. You're all so close. Really? This seems to feel absolutely normal to her. After being with them for a while, I feel uncomfortable. At the same time, I also feel a sense of frustrated embarrassment. Why is that? I was suddenly tossed into a situation where I stood out. Then I was treated like a child. What exactly was I feeling? What exactly were you feeling? The time I just spent with Furukawa's family, the mood in there was so foreign to me. It seemed like something that take place on a different planet. My spirits noticeably dampen. I just want to go home and sleep on this for the night. But unfortunately... The living room. My father was sitting in the corner, his back hunched over. As I see him, I'm overcome with anger. Hey, old man, if you're going to sleep, you should at least lie down. With nowhere to channel my emotion, I simply suppress him and calmly say the words. No answer. Either he's sleeping or he just doesn't feel like listening. I can't really tell the difference these days. Hey, Dad. I try, try calling him something else. He slowly raises his head and squints his eyes open. He peers up at me. I wonder how I look in his eyes. Does he really see my face as the face of his own son? Oh, now look at that. I hope I didn't cause you any trouble, Flaregan. The scene before me turns red for a moment. But after that, I leave as I always do. Behind me, I hear an imploring voice repeating my name, with a can attached to it. What did I come all the way here for? What did I plan to do once I got here? A theme of nostalgia hits me like a truck. Nostalgia for a kindness I knew long, long ago. I don't think I've ever known something like that. And yet, despite how distant that memory is, it still feels so familiar, like it happened only yesterday. But just a little earlier, I've been watching on as something like that took place again right in front of me. When they treated me like a child, I returned to being a child. But all I did was feel annoyed by that. If you like... I hear a voice right behind me. I turn back to look in its direction and see a girl. She looks like an illusion. Purity itself. I can... The words flow from her mouth. I can take you. Take me where though she slowly closes her eyes to a place where wishes are granted. This is a declaration to me. This small messenger from another world. We stand there in the freezing atmosphere, in the place closest to the entrance to that world. Ah. I force myself to make a sound. I'm pretty sure we're dreaming right now. My body feels as though it's been paralyzed. Yeah. My voice trembles as it answers. The girl opens her eyes. And then, what are you doing here? Her face returns to normal, to the one of simple purity that I know. Uh... Nothing really. That's strange. You just went home. Well, is there something you need to do at my house? No, not really. I've calmed back down. It was just a little too early to go home. But it's already so late. Oh, that's right. You're a diliquent, sub I san Yep, that's me. It's probably hard being that way, huh? Now, you don't need to worry about me, though. I do this because I want to remember. It seems like you've it get boring. What about you, Furukawa-san? Are you out shopping again? No. She immediately replies in the negative. I'm practicing for a play. I see, that makes sense. 
I always practice at night in the park. But it's late at night? Isn't that, you know, dangerous? I was practicing a little later than normal today. I usually practice earlier, but I'm alright. I was actually on my way back here when I saw you. Okay, this is not a dream then. I was assigning some of my lines for you. So that's what I was saying before. I see. I'll be happy if you could give me some feedback. I don't know how to give feedback. I'm not a play connoisseur. If that was all a performance, but it's definitely worth of, worthy of praise. I can't find the words to praise her with. I'll be up and go home. I think I'm going to take tomorrow off from school. It's a joke, stupid. Don't act so devastated. Sub so don't I, Zan. Your jokes are cruel. I was actually starting to cry. She starts wiping the edges of her eyes with her finger. She's like a small child. Come on now. Be nicer to people. Sub so I, Zan. Are you still not going, going to go home after this? Nope, gonna stay up for a while longer. You'll be late again for school tomorrow. Yeah, maybe. But that's fine. I'm a diliquent after all. I wonder if that's really true. I still have a hard time believing you. You don't seem like a diliquent at all, subtitle I said. That's just how some of us diliquents are. You said that you got into you got in fights with your father. Yeah, I did. Does it have something to do with that? You'll get in a fight with your father if you see each other. So you walk around outside until he falls asleep. That makes you late to school all the time, which causes everyone to whisper that you're delinquent. Am I wrong? What a sharp girl. Either that or I've said so much about my personal life that it was easy to guess all of that. You're wrong. I don't confirm for her. I want to look cool, calm, collected. It's going to have the opposite effect though. Are you sure I'm wrong? We barely know each other. I'm shocked you're able to come up with all of that. I can, because of you, Subtitle. Subtitle, I said. I thought that must be some sort of reason for why you do the things you do. That's that's just a thing I had, I guess. Even if that was the case. What were you going to do about it? I try asking her. You're the one who gave me courage, Subtitle, said. So I want to help you in return. I want to give you courage. The courage to face off against my old man? No, you shouldn't confront him. You need to understand each other. How? That... That's something that takes a lot of time. Yeah, I bet it does. We're just kids. I look far off into the distance. Above the roofs of the house in town, the night clouds shine dimly from the light of the noon. Moon? If you'd like... You could come to my house. Phil Carl's voice breaks my trance. It must be the proposal she came up with after struggling to think of something in the last few moments. I think it would be good if you put some distance between you and your father and give each other time to think. You two are family, so I'm sure you'll start to miss each other once you're apart. Really? Even after a few years of practically being apart from each other? Mentally? Doing that will make you remember that you really do love each other. And then, maybe you're able to sit back, sorry, sit down and talk to it. Talk the next time you meet. Also, this way you'll at least be able to go to sleep at a decent hour, so you won't be late for school. Two birds with one stone. She must have had to make an effort to say all that. What do you think, Subtitle I said? Would you like to do that? I would. That would be a good thing. Yeah, I guess so. It'd be nice if I could. Okay, then let's... You idiot. You trust people too easily. I turn my back to her. You're the one who decided to speak to me of all people, subtitled I San. Her voice is tense. You're the one who said you'd help me find drama club members. That alone is enough to make you a good person in my eyes. I start to walk off. I don't hear any other words on her. Really strange of how people perceive things. It's like insults are... Sorry, insults are compliments in a way. I must have been dreaming. It was a dream of long ago. I stared at the scene for a while trying to recall the whole thing. I can't remember what it was about though. What I do know is that the dream left me feeling at ease. 
I crawl out of bed and begin getting dressed. Looking at the clock, I realize that first period has already started. I grab my thin bag and head to the first floor. My father's already gone. I pass through the messy room and head to the entranceway. After I put on my shoes and lock the door behind me, I leave home. And then, I walk down the usual path all alone. But there's nobody wearing the same uniform as me around. Well, of course, first period has already started after all. I see this road empty more frequently than I see it filled with students wearing school uniforms. Maybe I should just ditch and hang somewhere. I'll just be sleeping away if I go to school. Vroom. Even so, since I'm wearing a uniform, I can't really go anywhere public. Vroom. Going to Sinahara's room to kill time wouldn't be a bad choice. Vroom. But hey, if I sleep in class, at least I'll be counted as present. Vroom. And a collision. Ah. Suddenly something hits me in the back, and it was a very intense impact at that. For an instant I can't breathe and my eyes flicker. My back feels like it's on fire. I turn around as I reach behind me to hold my back and there stands. Thanks! You just had to waltz and crash into me! What do you mean sorry? You're on a bloody moped or something! Motorbike at the very least. Moped at the very least. You! Don't tell me you hit me with that! <laughs> Actually, I still am not very used to driving this. I just got my license last, last week after all. Of course I passed my first drive, so I bought myself a new bike. A new bike? What do you think? Cool, isn't it? Apologies sincerely before you start boasting. Eh, I did say sorry just now, didn't I? You call that being sincere? Since you're, show your sincerity in a more tangible way. Go look up a word rep reparation in the dictionary. <laughs> what are you talking about? It's your fault you're walking in the middle of the road. I'm a vulnerable pedestrian. You're going to get your license suspended for hurting someone. You're such a wiener. Whiner. If you're so vulnerable, then walk along the edge of the street like a vulnerable pedestrian would. You picked a fight with someone stronger than you, and now that you lost your plane with victim? Don't you so petty. <laughs> Hang on a minute. Why don't you just stand here and listen to her giving me rubbish? I wasn't trying to fight a bike. Hell, she rammed into me from behind. I am 100% the victim here. Okay, what is it? I'll call the cops and tell them that there's been an accident here. No matter the reason, you are definitely getting your license revoked. Have fun spending all day listening to some boring lecture at traffic school. If you even try to do that, I'll turn you into roadkill. Her eyes aren't laughing. I'm just kidding. Well, I'm serious. I bet. By the way, what are you doing here this late? Besides, isn't it against school rules to come by motorbike? It's because I'm late that I'm riding my bike. There aren't that many people around. I'm in a rush and it's a breeze. Yeah, according to you, it's a goddamn breeze. You and your goddamn bike. Well, you're still late no matter how fast you go it. It doesn't matter in the end, right? If you think like such a sloth, you're going to waste your life away. Doesn't ride a bike to school because... Because it's a breeze, make you a sloth too. Vehicles are the fruit of human intelligence. They're the pinnacle of civilization. They only have a purpose if you use them. What terrible reasoning. Then at least give me a ride to school. This bike only seats one. If I squeeze in, there will be room for two. What? Could it be that you want to hug me? Are you saying it's okay to? If you're okay with not being able to eat anything but rice porridge for lunch. Oh, I mean I'll break your jaw if you try. I don't need you to spell it out for me. Okay, I'm going then. Yeah, okay. I walk to the back of Kyo's bike and sit on the rear wing. Go! Whack. A helmet mercilessly hits my jaw. That hurts! Where the hell do you think you are sitting? If you break the wing, I'll break your nose. Do you say it's okay as long as I don't hug you? In that case, sit on the seat and go throw your hands up in the air. I'll get thrown off the bike. I won't go that fast. Then give me more room on the seat. All you know, protagonist, you could just walk to school. Fine. I slip off the rear wing and stand next to the bike. Alright, now make me some room. And hey, where the hell are you going? <laughs> That's so naive of you, you dummy. 
Kyo's abusive face, abusive words fade into the distance. She rides away from me. The next time I see your bike, I'm sticking gum in its keyhole. With a screech, Kyo suddenly does a 180 in the distance and charges this way. And another one. If you do that, I'll jam chopsticks under your fingernails. I'll keep that in mind. After glaring at me, Kyo turns her bike around and rides away once more. She sure can't take a joke. I take a breath while glaring at her bike's taillight as it moves into the distance. That reminds me, Fujibayashi's fortune. I'll have an intense impact with a gentle girl. Both my body and mind will be refreshed. God damn you imbecile! Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The bottom of the hill. Fukawa's there again, standing still as can be. Morning! Oh, good morning. What are you doing here again? I was waiting for you, Subtitle I san You were waiting? Yes, I thought we could go to school together every morning from now on. Huh? If that would bother you, then I won't, but... The school is right there, you know. You just have to climb this hill, that's all. Yes, but... She glanced at the school gates. Climbing this hill, I guess it's something she still needs to work up courage to do. So, I guess not then. She looks back at me, holding down her hair as it dances in the wind. If you wait for me, you'll be late for school every day, you know. That's okay. It's much better than not going at all. You should just go on with your own. So, you go on your own, with or without me. Okay, I'll try. It's not like a mind, though. Huh? I guess even a guy like me is able to help her. <laughs> Funny! Also makes me feel like a luxury to be in this position. That's why I start walking. Let's go. Okay. Her feet pitter patter behind me. Don't you need to figure out what you'll be having for lunch today? No, I'll be alright. After we're going to school together. That's motivating in and of itself. <laughs> I see. In that case, let's go buy lunch together. You're just going to buy bread anyway, right? Yes. A little later, I'd be back. So I look back and realize this is another odd promise I made her. Mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm. Um, subtitle I can? Yeah. With nothing in particular to do, I just, dis I just decide to lie down on my desk when Fujibayashi comes to talk to me. Here. Oh, worksheets? Are these from homeroom? Yes. Thanks. I reach my hand out to grab the worksheets from Fujibayashi, but otherwise they stay slumped over. In one fell swoop, I grab the worksheets and cram them into my desk. Do you need something else? Um, well... Oh. Yes? And Jenny stood up and turned to face Fujibayashi. Your sister's no joke, you know. Uh, Wan Chan is? Yeah, she was late today, wasn't she? Yeah, Wan Chan has a hard time waking up. I met her on the way here. She was on a bu- Is something the matter? No, I just felt like something hit my head. Whatever. Anyway, this morning I was hit in the back by Kyoki with a bu- Thud again. Sub I can? Yeah, sorry, with a b but Just save a bike! Bike! A b- Hey, sounds like subtitles by. Well, he swings both ways. What's that? Crap, he's looking this way. Hide your ass, he's good. <laughs> what? Alright, a-holes, let's settle this in the restroom. He said restroom? <laughs> Man, guess he's serious. Subtitle I can. Wait, Fujibayashi, this is a terrible misunderstanding. I, I heard there are those kind of people too. What I was trying to say is... Kyo hit me with a butt slap. All of a sudden, there was a small quick thud on my forehead. Something came flying at me. It didn't really hurt, but I could feel the sharp impact ringing within my ears. Then, it falls on my lap. It's an eraser. It seems the wider side get... So I got a clean hit on my forehead. It's also missing chunks. Were those tiny fuzz I've been feeling? Pieces of this? Regardless. Where the hell is it? Slide. 
as I stand up and yell, Kyo stomps into the classroom. She then mercilessly drags me out of the classroom by my necktie. What's the big idea? You, what do you think you're saying in the middle of your class? Huh? What else? You ran me over a bike! She covers my mouth with her hat. Hey, you trying to get me suspended? Huh? Why would I? As I raise my eyebrows, Kyo wraps her arms around my neck and drags me towards her. She then whispers to me in a soft voice that only I can hear. Since riding a bike to school is prohibited, it'll be a huge pain if the teachers find out, you know. Then don't ride here on something so dangerous! What are you talking about? Now that I've bought it, of course I'm going to want to use it. Even if you say something so selfish. Anyhow, this thing about me riding a bike to school is absolutely a secret. And if I let it slip, then I'm pulling your eyeballs out and sticking them up to your nose. I won't be able to see that one coming. Just how can this girl say something so terrifying without a second thought? Okay, now go back to your classroom and write it off somehow. Fine. I let out a sign and return to my classroom. Hey guys, actually, um... Yeah. <laughs> and... <laughs> you, what the hell was that for? Well, I think I did a pretty fine job covering that up. Why would you say something like that? Well, if I didn't do that, I'd be one who looks bad. But that's okay, things like that happen. Right back at you. What happens if people take it the wrong way? This is no joke. No joke? You're trying to tell me something? I didn't mean anything particular by that. Anyway, you say that again and I'll pound you to death. Alright. I click my time and return to the classroom. Yeah. Sorry guys, I was just kidding. <laughs> That's the same thing! <laughs> That's the same thing! <laughs> uh, hello! Do you really want to try? Want me to strangle you for 20 minutes till I almost break your neck? Huh? Jeez, what should I say then? Just don't say another word and go back to your seat. So that's so boring. Huh? What was that? Just talking to myself, don't worry about it. <laughs> What's he gonna say next? <laughs> it's lunch break, but someone else hasn't shown up. If he were here, telling him down would be a pain anyway. I got lucky. I'll leave a class by myself. <sighs> I want to say she was in class B. I'll leave the classroom and look around the hallway. Through a car was standing against the wall that, so that she won't get in the way of traffic. Our eyes meet. Her face breaks into a smile as she trots over. Stop told I san are you okay? About what? Did you not have to go with that other person? Oh yeah, he's fine. I see, that's good then. Why don't we go? Sure. We start walking side by side, you know. Walking around school with a girl is seriously embarrassing. Why? I casually look over a profile for car as we, as we stroll. Then again, I guess people would be jealous of me more than anything. Huh? What is it? Nothing. <laughs> yeah, nothing, alright. As always, the front of a bread line is so crowded it's difficult to even approach with a display case. It looks like there's even more people here than usual. Yeah. Wah. A single male student rushes past Fukara and dives straight into a billowing crowd. Ah! ah. He's quickly swallowed up and lost to the sea of bodies. Why don't we go back? Nah, that's okay, I'll buy something for you. Just tell me what you want and I'll get it. I'll be fine with Anpan. <sighs> Come on, go for something more exciting. I mean, you can buy one of those whenever you want. Pick something you can only get right now. Okay, if you really want to spoil me, bring it on. Um, well, she balls both of her hands into fists. I like a piece of jewel-colored bread. What's that? It's a single piece of bread that has both cream and chocolate in it. It's a very special magical piece of bread. Magical, you say? She's really emphasizing the point. Uh, never knew they sold anything like that. Feeling I'll never really be interested in sweet bread, so I guess I will, no. Well, nevertheless, I'm heading out. Pray for my safe return. And for any food in hand, I give her a big thumbs up. 
May the gods watch over you. Thanks. Fukara puts both of her hands together by her chest, theoretically. Okay. I wish my body into a small space in the crowd. I then push forward by using my arms to shove any students blocking my path out of the way. As I'm doing this, I recognize the back of another student's head. Sunohara. He didn't even come to class. Why is he here? I grab his shoulder. Hey! What is it? Oh, sub today, what's up? What are you doing here, man? What else? I'm here to buy bread. Is there something you is there something going on today? It's not usually this crowded. What? You came in here totally oblivious? Unbelievable. Just look. I look to where Sunohara points and see an advertisement hanging from the ceiling. It says new product. Fillet of fish sandwich. I see. Now I get it. Everyone's been spreading all sorts of rumors about that thing since it was announced last week. Do you really need to spread rumors about a sandwich? What? Anyway, so can you explain to me what a fillet of fish sandwich is? Excuse me? Take a closer look. It's not fillet, it's fill it. Huh, he's right. The current prevailing fear is that you get to fill it to the brim with whatever fish you want, but I don't know. There's no telling how deep this rabbit hole goes. Actually, I'm almost certain that's just a misspelling. Gah! Sunahara's shoulders are jerked down. My foot's stuck in the crowd! Save me, sub I! He reaches out his hand, but I pull back to avoid it. <laughs> what? Sub I thought we were friends! Sorry, Sunahara. That was never how I saw it. Ah! <laughs> he swore up and lost to the sea of crowd. I can't believe I can't be standing around either. It's only getting more crowded as time passes on. The mass of people feels like it's about to burst. Are you all that desperate to get a piece of misspelled bread? Fish that looks like. I blindly charge forward. And then I got it! In my hand are a piece of dual colored bread and a sandwich for myself. Thanks for waiting! Thank you very much. Were you okay? Yeah, I managed somehow. The school coop is such a scary place. Yeah. Everyone must be so sick of studying that they're getting themselves worked up over a new piece of bread. And then we're here to the courtyard for lunch. Our time there is quiet and peaceful, almost like my days at school up until now. I wonder if we feel so at peace around each other because we're both outsiders. It'd be mean to call an outsider. Exactly. Don't call an outsider. Look to my side. She's intently eating her bread. She's so into it that it's funny. I assume this is how she always is, putting everything into whatever it is she's doing, even if that thing is simply eating lunch. She only ended up this way because of bad luck. Unlike me. Furukawa doesn't even notice me staring at her as she continues to eat her bread, seemingly unaware to the world around her. After a bit, all done. She folds up the bread's wrapping paper and puts it in her pocket. That was really delicious. Even as she talks, I keep looking at her face, sort of lost in thought. Our eyes meet. Um, yeah. Could there be something on my mouth? No, you're good. So, what could you be looking at then? Hey, Furukawa, yes? I think you're cute. Excuse me? Partly because of just who you are at your core. You know, how you carry yourself, your demeanor, that kind of thing. I think that once people get to know you, they'll like you. I have zero doubt that you'll be able to make plenty of friends. It makes me feel sad if someone tries to cheer me up when I wasn't even sad to begin with. No, this isn't me trying to cheer you up. I'm just sharing my thoughts, I guess. A first impression, let's say? Like, we've practically just met, right? So, you can take those words at face value. K yeah. Hmm. Take them at face value. I grab her shoulders and tell her as if I'm giving instructions. But that's a strange thing to say. Even if you ask me, ask that I believe you, you know you're right. I quickly realise just how strange what I said actually is. <laughs> yeah, some realisation that is. I sit back down. As I do, I 
meet eyes of a female in the third floor windows of the school building directly in front of me. Hey, he try it away, waving again. Smile while you do it, though. I'm not doing that again. You do it, subtitle Sam. Like I told you, I'm a guy. If I just spontaneously wave by myself, they think I'm a creeper, no? That's not true, Subtitle Dan. Subtitle I said, you're tall and cool, so... So, if you waved, I'm sure a lot of girls would flock to you. I don't think that's how that works, blokey. And then they push someone like, no! You're right, if I did that, I wouldn't be able to hang out with you anymore. Never mind, then. You shouldn't take what I said at face value. Listen, you... You little... I poke her on the head. <laughs> Furukawa laughs. Actually, no, it's not quite a laugh. She went as far as smiling, but... I look in the same direction, sir. I find myself looking at the third floor window of the school building again. The shadows disappeared. Hey, Furukawa? Yes? Want to go to the club together? Club room? Yes, why don't we? Furukawa stands up and brushes the dirt off my skirt. Skirt, skirt. How much time do we have? We have about 20 minutes until the first bell. Okay, let's use that time to make a flyer that says the club's looking for members. Okay. Furukawa nods vigorously, excitement building with each bob of her head. Do you have anything planned? Like, before you advertise your club, you've got to establish some ideas at first of what you want the club to do, and also have some things in hand, like a first aid kit, for example, just in case if anything does go wrong. Medically. The two of us start writing things down with magic markers on a piece of office paper. Magic markers. We need to start by choosing a day for an open house, and we can tell people more about the club then. Excuse me about the law. Apologies about the honor, I mean. What should we, when should we make it? We won't be able to get anyone in the doors if it's too soon. How, so how about two weeks from now? Okay, if we say club at... Bleh, if we say a club activity start at the beginning of May, that would sound nice and clean. I can only hope things go that well. Squeak, squeak. It's done. Um, don't you think you could use a little more something? More advertisement material. Make it look fancy rather than just words. Rather than writing words on a bit of paper, make it fancy, make it have lots of colours on it, make it have some kind of structure to it. Just words is boring. Like what? Hmm, I think that's what's miss. I think that what's missing is... <laughs> what? No way! Uh, no, I am not putting that one down at the top. Why the hell would... Why is that an option in the first place? Anyways, folks, we're going to be going to be coming back to this in the next time around. Thank you so much for watching and see you all the next time. Just say that she rode to school on a bike. And then she'll get a taste of her own medicine rather than running me over, for goodness sakes. I'll just dodge out of the way if she tries to run me over on the bike for the second time around. Thank you so much for watching. See you all next time with Clan Ad. Thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves.